Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name's Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is July 3rd, and I'll tell you what, it is a crazy day out there. Court blocks Biden's admin on new LNG exports. Is this because of the Chevron deference of the Supreme Court decision? Hang on, we'll find out. Governor Newsom, I'll tell you what, unpopularity might have something to do with his extreme mandates that, that make life unaffordable. This is from my buddy over there, Ronald Stein. He is just one cool cat, and I'm looking forward to speaking with him next Monday as well. China unites oil giants to boost domestic production under Z's directive. This is pretty important, and there's a big reason why. Native American group sues Biden administration for restricting Alaskan oil and gas production. Holy smokes, if it just doesn't get any better. I think it's kind of cool. Way to go, Alaska. All right. Oil supply rises 2% on summer demand hopes, supply worries. There's a little more to this story, and there are several other stories that kind of hang around with it as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on the first one here. Court blocks Biden's admin on new LNG exports. Is this because of the Supreme Court decision? All right. So when we take a look at this case, this is a huge win for the country's energy industry and millions of jobs it supports against the attacks on the Biden administration to further its radical climate agenda against at the expense of our economy. West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morenzi said in a statement, the administration's energy department has no such authority to justify this ban. Authority on matters this, like this lies with Congress and Congress alone. Well said. So this is a direct response of the Chevron deference court case. And so when you sit back and take a look at this, this is very important because this is just another one, another lawsuit that is going to start coming around. There is hope against the deep state. The White House and the Energy Department explained at the time of the pause they would give federal officials an opportunity to conduct a rigorous environmental review to assess the impact of new LNG projects on carbon emissions. This is bull hockey because if you take a look at LNG exports and even with shipping them across the planet, they save and have less greenhouse gases than do burning coal power plants. So the U.S. Department of Energy was virtually signaling to their base. Hats off to this judge for picking up on this this quick and the attorneys on this case. Let's roll over to our buddy over there, Governor Newsom. Governor Newsom's unpopularity might have something to do with his extreme mandates that make life unaffordable. As I look at this article from Ronald Stein, and I have really enjoyed my conversations with Ronald. You need to follow his information will be in the show notes. I've read his books. He is the Pulitzer Prize nominee on clean energy adaptations. He is absolutely a uh, great resource. In California, the economy depends on affordable, reliable, and cleaner electricity fuels. Unfortunately, policymakers are driving up California's electric and gas prices, and California now has the highest electricity and fuel prices in the nation. Governor Newsom remains oblivious to the fact that mandatory emissions just in wealthy countries to achieve net zero is a fuel's, fool's game. The governor is also remains. Uh, Remains reluctant and incapable of participating in conversations about basic energy literacy questions. Well said. China, India, and Indonesia are three of the largest emitting generators, same as countries that do not have the financial wherewithal or technical capabilities to reduce or capture anything. I'll tell you what, Ronald just hits it right out of the park. And there's a graphic in here, Miss Producer, if you could bring this up. Regular gasoline and diesel, and take a look at that cost difference. California fuel is $2 more expensive than that in Mississippi. And look at the gasoline and the taxes, 14 and 15%. 
I mean, California just taxes it right on top of it. California is growing dependency on other nations for its crude oil is a serious national security risk for America since the state is home to nine international airports and 41 military airports and three of the largest shipping ports in America. This is a national security risk. And not only does California buy from China, they're going to be buying more diesel and gasoline on some rumblings that I've been hearing. Don't have the ability to talk about that yet, but this is despicable what Governor Newsom is doing. Just thought I'd share my personal opinion on that one. So China unites oil giants to boost domestic production under Xi's directive. Yesterday, Michael and I talked about the additional power uh, that is that is the storage for the coal natural gas lng all building in china this article kind of follows along with that and president z is now trying to bolster his internal drilling so they can drill within the country the state-owned energy group cnpc stated on monday this newly established unit will be responsible for exploring very deep oil and gas deposits and extracting more difficult to exploit unconventional resources this is important to look at it. China is expanding its gas capacities, oil and gas accelerating work in the South China Sea region, developing the deposits there as much as 991 billion cubic meters or 35 trillion cubic feet of gas exploration is expected to be ready as early as 2025. That is huge. Hats off for them. Maybe they'll pollute a little bit less. So. Let's go to another lawsuit that is now cropped up. Native American group sues Biden administration for restricting oil and gas production. This is another fallout from the Chevron deference. And if you sit back and take a look at this, this is important. A Native American group is now suing the Biden administration over one of the most aggressive moves against Alaskan oil and gas development. The voice of the Arctic organization representing 23 native african american organization in alaska filed suit against the blm bureau of land management and the department of the interior on friday voice is alleging that the Biden administration ignored congress intent for the npr dash and walked over the concerns the interest of the native americans who stand to gain from npra development this is very important because our great oil and gas companies in Alaska have done a phenomenal job and they have really done a great job. Everyone knows that watch is a fan of this show. I love Alaska. I've loved my trips up there. I've got family history up there. And this is a great move for trying to get more revenue for the Alaskan natives up there. My hat's off to them for getting this thing done. Let's go to the last article for here over at oil price. Oil price rise on 2% on summer demand supply worries. This also coincides from another article. This one's from Reuters, but another article also was talking about OPEC may not be able to rein in their production because it looks like Nigeria and a few others are just going ahead and producing away outside of their production. In Russia, oil product exports from the Black Sea port of Tupese are set to rise by 59.7% on month-to-month on basis in July to 99 metric tons of this 0.6 million tons for June. Traders are also watching for the impact that hurricanes have on oil and gas production coming up in the Gulf. So we're going to see some jumps come up because of the, now I believe it's category five coming up into the Gulf of Mexico. So with that, please reach out to us on the, and subscribe, like, subscribe to the energy newsbeat substack.com, the energy newsbeat.substack.com or at energy newsbeat, uh, dot co and look forward to speaking to everybody. And we've got some great podcasts coming around the corner. So thanks and have an absolutely wonderful day.